Oh, hell yeah. Team Mom OG is on right after This Is Us. It's going to be a great wait, Friday night. Wait, wait. Omar, you know what time of year it is, right? No. Whoa. <laughs> It's time for holiday TV episodes. Won't be needing that anymore. Let's do it. The holidays are upon us. Christmas is coming up. It's like a warning. It the, is. Goose, oh, the, the goose is getting fat, folks. <laughs> it's time to cut it. Coming. Yes. Oh, that is a good one. Um, so. What I'm going to talk about today mm -hmm. are our favorite holiday TV episodes. Because I love movies, I love TV, and this is the time of year for it. <laughs> okay. Wait. Well, I think that's all the time. Yes. Like, it's, but the time for this movies is, is every time. time. All right. Yes. You kick it off. Let me hear okay. what, what do you got. All right. So I'm going to go with maybe one of the more obvious ones. Um, it's from The Office. 2005 season two. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot of amazing office American episodes. American Office. American Office. Yeah, let's clarify that. There's a lot of amazing American uh, or Office Christmas episodes, like Classy Christmas, Diwali. But this one is the first one that I think really takes the cake. It is Christmas Party. This is the one we have the the infamous Yankee Swamp swap uh, between yeah. the whole because Michael got a bonus and decided to spend four hundred dollars on Ryan and get him an iPod for Christmas when the the gift amount was supposed to be twenty dollars. Um, so you have all these people who are they're doing the Yankee swap with the iPod and it all kicks off because Phyllis hand knit Michael an oven mitt and he this is and this is what he says I love you this many dollars worth that's what this means um, he's a lot of great quotes in this um, I see my like a lot of Michael in myself <laughs> yeah, the I way that, that I buy somebody yeah. something and they're like here's a hand knit oven mitt Yes. What the hell? And it has a lot of great moments for all the characters. You see Angela, who is the uptight one, who's increasingly getting angrier and angrier at Michael for messing up, because she's the head of the party planning committee. Yeah. So you see her getting increasingly angry that he's messing everything up, especially when he buys the vodka and, the, and they start drinking because he's trying to make amends <laughs> when everyone finds out about the bonus. You have the amazing moment with Jim and Pam, which is our, you know, series long love romance that is that that was the end game and this episode has him buying her this teapot which fun fact Jenna Fisher got to pick out the teapot and she picked out the color teal because her then husband James Gunn at the time that was his favorite color so yeah I know <laughs> so that's why she picked out that teapot that and that's why the fun teapot fact. it is a fun fact are we supposed to bring fun facts to the table? <laughs> I may need to prepare myself a little more. <laughs> well, it's just a really cool fact. And then I think I have one of the best endings, though, when Meredith flashes Michael and yes. he's like, gross. And he takes a picture <laughs> of it. Because <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> well, what I love about this episode is that it pays off seven or five seasons later in episode in season nine. When, oh my god, you yes, made it way after I did. Jim the Fonz had already had jumped that shark I by the I had to. I had to see how it ended. When Jim and Pam were going through a rough patch, he hands her the card that he decided not to give her that revealed his true feelings. He gave oh. it to her because they were going through a rough patch and we got to finally hear what it was what oh, it that's said sweet. in him. I didn't realize that the assignment was favorite <laughs> TV episode <laughs> TV Christmas special. Wait, you're not going to talk about so Star Wars. I did, I did some research. Oh, good. Because I wanted to talk about the crown jewel of the uh, holiday special, the He-Man and She-Ra oh, my. A Christmas special. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A so Christmas? I want you guys to understand that I watched this whole damn thing. I'm impressed. Yeah, the really sacrifices am. that I make for you people. <laughs> so did you have a different like mind when you were a kid? Well, that, that was always bad. Even as a kid, it was bad. Like I remember, and I had a mad crush. And on I remember Shira. thinking, this is this is this is weird. But I didn't really remember it. Was it. Kind of weird. And as so a kid. I didn't remember it either. Yeah. So I got really excited when you were like, you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, oh good. Yes, yeah. I'm really gonna so okay. So let me. Let me sum up the plot. Good idea. Okay. Are you gonna dash our dreams? Orko gets in a rocket ship and pulls, breaks a lever, which makes the rocket start. And then the rocket goes to Earth, and he picks up two kids who are just in the forest <laughs> getting a fucking kidnapped. Christmas tree on a sled who are who are lost. Oh boy. And then Man at Arms says, "Oh, I'm gonna bring Orko back with my special beam cannon," and he uh, he teleports everybody 
including the kids to Eternia. Oh yeah, and all the Shira folks are on Eternia too. So they're all hanging out. They're having Christmas. They're just having like little little vignettes. Like Bo is singing his Christmas song. And then all of a sudden, Horde Prime, who I didn't remember at all from my childhood, is like, no, Christmas spirit. No relation to Optimus. No. no. Oh, Christmas right. spirit from is making... <laughs> and uh, you bring, bring me those children. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> like Hordak and Skeletor fighting for these these Earth kids to bring them to Horde Prime rather than just killing them. And then Skeletor is gets the Christmas spirit and saves the children from Horde Prime at the end, and everybody has a big laugh, and they send the kids home. Oh, I, I don't think I feel well. Well, I think you're feeling the Christmas spirit, Skeletor. It makes you feel good. How long was it? 45 fucking minutes! <laughs> that is a long TV special. <laughs> so I learned, I learned two things about this. What you may not recall from, from uh, 30, 20 years ago, however long, is that another main feature of this Christmas special is giant transforming robots. What? And we hate those giant transforming robots. They come on screen, they attack the heroes, and then the heroes... The Rock Lords? No, the Mandroids. Mandroids from Prime? Ford Prime? Yeah, I, no, they're like their own, their own their separate entity? Like, Wait, they, faction. Yeah, they, I, but they're, they're big remember, robots yeah. and they turn into vehicles. Yeah, I remember and, that. And what we learn about that is, one, parents, you know, you can't trust those big transforming robots. Oh, I see where this is going. They're after your kids. Mm -hmm. They and are two, after kids. Look at how easily He-Man and She-Ra break these big transforming robots, parents. So for Christmas, you need a gift. <laughs> That's right. She-Ra and she 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 not, not the transforming robots. Interesting. Not the transforming robots. Oh. I didn't the see it that way. The second well thing really cool. that I learned from the He-Man and She-Ra A Christmas Special. <laughs> you, I love the way that you're saying the <laughs> yes, entire title every time. Is that exactly. the Christmas spirit is in fact an infectious disease, kind of like toxoplasmosis, mm. that uh, that gets into your brain and makes you do things that aren't in your best interest. Wow. So Skeletor, uh, yes. having been infected with the Christmas spirit, shoots Horde Prime ship and saves the children. And he doesn't know why. He says, oh, I feel bad. Wow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> or incredible. I feel good, but I prefer so, to feel evil. Did you watch this with your children or no. by yourself? You no. didn't Where did you watch it by yourself? <laughs> I watched it on the YouTube, on the couch. On the couch. On the phone. <laughs> uh, so for mine, I went with... Uh, a 1959 the <laughs> Twilight Zone classic. Wow, that's Night of the Meek. Yeah, yeah, Night of the Meek. Twilight Zone's always been one of my favorite series, and it's it's a pretty cute story about a wino. Isn't that like one of your Christmas or holiday traditions? Yes, my oh, daughter wow. and I watch Twilight Zone the entire New Year's Day. That's what we do, and so we we watched this recently, and I rewatched it. It's mm -hmm. Still one of my favorite episodes. Um, it's season two, episode eleven. So it's a wino. Guy is drunk. He has the ability. He finds this big bag and has the ability to give kids what they want, and then even adults too. That's practically a story, but it's sweet and the music is wonderful. And it's that time of year. So fun fact, though, yeah. maybe not that fun. Unfortunately, this is one of the six episodes that they were trying to save money and cut corners. Oh. So what they did is they literally filmed it on VHS. Oh. And then yeah. try to transfer it to 16 millimeter, which is atrocious. And it it saved them like thirty thousand dollars in the end after these six episodes from season two, and they were like, "This is not worth it." Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you try to upgrade it, like 4K, Blu-ray, doesn't matter. It still it's looks like crap. crap it looks like it looks like a telenovela, like one of those, um, you know, like something you would see on Days of Our Lives or whatever. That's what it looks like, sadly. Or maybe no, Doctor Who actually looks better back then. But yeah, it's one of my favorite episodes from season two. I've got, I, 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 so two, but I'll talk about my animation later. The first one I want to talk about is Arrested oh. Development. So that's my go-to, like, if I want to watch something and just flip it on. Yes. Because I've watched it so many times. Right. The Christmas special is Afternoon Delight. It is so great. season two, I think it's episode six. Excuse me if I'm wrong on this. It's either episode six or episode 11. And mm. I can't remember which. But it's Afternoon Delight. And that's basically my family and then my relation to Heather's in a nutshell, but wow. probably less comedic. <laughs> so it 
it, it's really about like the family dynamics is always about you know the show yes but when michael uh tries to you know get together with his son and then michael. <laughs> maybe has her jealousy with her mom because her mom's not spending time they swap out yes but george michael you know he's like i'm gonna spend time with Anne, which they call her yam in this one <laughs> yes because isn't he gonna eat yams with her isn't that what he mentions in the beginning well, i think he mentions <laughs> i just remember the song <laughs> yes like because oh, you don't he, remember uh gob talking about his five thousand dollar suit the whole time God. Oh, you mean joe joe, joe so <laughs> gob was the company <laughs> Go buy us. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the guy in a six hundred dollar suit. I quote that all the time. Yeah. Yes, I do remember yeah, that. Exactly. No, my favorite part is George Michael going to Anne's family because that is my relationship oh. with my in laws. Yes. <laughs> because okay. it's kind of religious and it's kind of creepy. <laughs> That is awesome. I mean, it's it's really funny because yeah. it's so much that creepy like uncle or whatever like singing like, <laughs> and, and I'm just like, I don't know what's going on but here. That is a great series, and I forgot about that Christmas episode. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it involves pop brownies. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the banana suits and unfortunate songs. Oh, that, that song like, this choice song is perfect. So catchy. And it's like, oh, it's I just want to. Oh, afternoon no, delight. I, I love uh, it. So, um, for me, another one comes from one of my favorite series, um, and that's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, wow. In 98, season three, which is my favorite season of Buffy, um, happens. It happens right after the big reveal that, that Buffy lets everyone know that Angel's back. And then he's he's good again, but no one believes her. And you have the the atrocious Xander Willow kiss scene that happened prior, where they break up. That Willow and Xander oh, right. or yeah. Willow and Oz break up. Xander and Cornelia right. break up. It's a whole big thing. So right now you have a lot of people in bad places, and that starts this the episode called Amends. And the whole premise behind it is Angel starts having dreams um, of people he's murdered in the past when he was Angelus. And Buffy starts entering these dreams and not sure where to go. And they're technically broken up at this point. And it's all the backdrop of Christmas, right? So it's all about, you know, it's a Christmas episode. So we're talking about the idea of forgiving people, right? And making good. And that's the idea behind Christmas. And that's really what this episode's about. And it has some great acting, and especially by David Boreanaz and Sarah Michelle Geller as Angel and Buffy. And it has wonderful moments with um, Willow and Oz getting back together. Yeah. Of course, they're making their own amends. Mm -hmm. You have um, Angel and Buffy having to, you know, realize that Angel needs to keep fighting and he needs to do good instead of just killing himself, which was the whole plot. The first one was trying to make him first kill Buffy and he didn't want to kill Buffy. So he's like, or the first evil. So he said, well, I'm going to kill myself because I don't want to kill Buffy. And she said, no, you keep fighting. And of course, that could have foreshadowed him going to his own series where he does you know, yeah. fighting for some sort of salvation. That's the one that ends with the uh, the snow. Yes, right? yes, it yeah. ends with the snow, and it's and that's the whole thing. It was like she said, if there's if I can't convince you to not kill yourself, there has to be one thing, and then the snow starts to fall, and of course they weren't expecting that because it's Sunnydale, it's California, it's California, and everyone was just coming out, you know, shocked that it was snowing. They said, no sun today, it's gonna be snowy, and so her the last shot is her and Angel walking hand in hand on the street because there's no sun so he can walk hmm. so it was it was a really beautiful christmas episode which is it's buffy so you wouldn't think that'd be a traditional thing to use for christmas but it was a great episode so my next one is in the same genre okay it's in the horror but kind of cheesy genre and this is from tales from the crypt from 1989 <laughs> the second episode of tales from the crypt actually uh based on vault of horror number 35. Yeah. So, Tales from the Crypt borrowed from Vault of Horror and Haunt, Haunt of Fear, yeah. Shock shock and Suspense stories, and also Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> it is directed by Robert Zemeckis and written oh. by Fred uh, Burke. He was the guy that did Wasn't Monster he the Squad? lead singer for, Le for Limp Biscuit? No. Fred Dur <laughs> Kill yourself. Whatever happened to him. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Not now. <laughs> He's like, not now. This is not the guy. Anyway, um, so Robert Zemeckis has a tendency to use his wife in his movies, Mary Ellen Trainer. That was her name. She's okay. passed away now. But she was a mom in Goonies. She was a mom in Monster Squad. Oh, okay. And she was the woman in this episode that had killed her husband, her second husband, to get his inheritance. And this is the episode is called And All Through the House. 
Mm. And so there's this serial killer dressed up as Santa Claus going around and killing people and he breaks into her house. So it's got this suspense and horror element, but it's also kind of goofy. And so she she tries to like fight him off and there's a scene where she kind of fights him off and she's like, wait, I could blame my husband's murder on him. So she bludgeons her husband's head some more that's already dead oh, wow. and was like, I could put it off on him. He did it. The serial killer. Was he like, this is hot. Mommy is kissing Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, what? No, <laughs> what are you talking about? Is that is it? <laughs> was I saying that? <laughs> I thought Tales Crew was kind of I mean, a kid I, show. I, I no. No, okay, no, 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 no. I'm thinking Tales from, from, from Crypt. There's always a twist ending, and I haven't seen this one, and I, I'm like, is no, this no. supposed to be like... Tales from the Crypt is the reason... Like, Dan and I watched Tales from the Crypt because this is 1989, and it was a place we could see boobies. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this episode did not have boobies, unfortunately, but let well, me tell you, the later I... seasons made more up for it. But anyway, go ahead. You two go ahead. Is, is Mommy Kissing Santa Claus? What are you talking about? It's a song! Yeah, yeah I know, song. but not in this show. What? So the right. serial killer gets please. together with the other killer, but please, yes, please continue. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Tell us yeah. from the curve. Curve. Season That's 2 or season 1 episode <laughs> oh 1989. God. I don't know. You you took it to a dark place. It was super dark. <laughs> I mean, but it's Tales Curve, so I guess I can see that. Alright, well, my next one is one that I actually really enjoy. Star mm -hmm. Wars it Holiday is, Special. Is oh, the only Doctor Who Christmas special okay. worth watching. Oh, I don't know about that. And this That's is the work. Christmas Invasion. It is a good episode, though. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. let's just say up front, the whole, like, Sycorax, yeah, they suck. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> it doesn't matter about that. That's They're not ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but the... It is our first real introduction to David Tennant as, yep. as the Doctor. Right. Uh, he comes in quoting The Lion King and whatnot, and it's and it's. I mean, it's it's. You still don't really know what to expect from Doctor Who at this point. No. Especially because it's our first new Doctor. Changeover, yeah. Uh, after Eccleston, and so the you know you got spinning Christmas trees, all sorts of weird bullshit oh, God. that they never really tie together. It's actually yeah. a pretty awful TV show. But like, <laughs> wait a minute. But, what? No, but, but but the thing is, I love this episode, one, because it's got the kind of triumphant, the Doctor triumphant in a way that, that a lot of episodes try to do, but like, where he's just, I just figured this out because I'm clever, yeah. and uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm a very fancy lad. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it has a badass moment for David Tennant. It which does. Has, which yeah. he doesn't really do a lot. No, you're right. But no, he killed he, it in that first episode when he, he really got did. the sword. With the yeah. sword fight. He's yeah, like, don't come here it. again. Or whatever he said. Yeah. Yeah. Gets his hand cut it's off. New hand, it's a fight in the hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the thing that I like about that episode, so it's not only got Rose being, have, having this bittersweet relationship with David Tennant's mm -hmm. doctor right. because she doesn't know what to think about him. Yeah. But it's also got Ten, David Tennant, having this great faith in humanity and, and everything. And then Harriet Jones blasts the ship out of the sky. Torch and he's so disappointed. Yeah. And oh, he gets so angry. Oh, he does. And and then but then from you know, but then he does a you know, he does his little thing, his six little words, and then they move on and that and this this episode is just bittersweet in a lot of ways and that mm. kind of encapsulates the feeling of christmas it's in a lot of true. ways yeah. because christmas is always a little bit bittersweet it really is you know you're spending time with your family but you're thinking about people who aren't there and mm -hmm. you know you, you, i'm thinking about the doctor yeah that's good. <laughs> one of my favorite overall cartoons i guess have come out recently is bob's burgers and my favorite episode is the christmas episode where linda puts up the Christmas tree. I think it's either before Thanksgiving or just directly after. Okay. And it's a real Christmas tree. And then it freaking loses its leaves, you know, oh, right before wow. Christmas. Like, it just dies. It's just mm -hmm. like... Poof. And they're like, oh, we need to get a new tree the day before Christmas. But they go on this Christmas tree hunt, and they're trying to look for a Christmas tree that literally the day before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it's almost an impossible journey. Of course, they're upset, but they stop and get a Dutch baby, which I never had heard about what a Dutch baby was. It's Wait, what, what is a, a Dutch, Dutch baby? baby? <laughs> We've never heard of it either. It's a Dutch baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. A fart? <laughs> I've heard of a Dutch oven. Yeah. So so it's it's a French dessert. It's It tastes not dissimilar to French toast. Um, oh. It's actually really, really good. You make it in the oven in basically a, a, a Dutch oven. 
<laughs> you make it in a Dutch oven. Got it. Okay. Okay. Anyways, my wife can make a delicious one for you guys sometime. Um, but they stop and they go to this little place. They get a Dutch baby and they leave. And basically, they cut off this trucker in this candy cane truck. And so they're trying to find this Christmas tree. They've got this Christmas tree. Now they're trying to make it home, but they're being chased down by this trucker. And for me, it just encapsulates like the bad side of Christmas yes. where you go shopping and you're just mad because there's too many people out there. My last pick is one that is another family tradition. We watch it before Christmas and that is Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean. It is from 1992. Wow. It is Rowan Atkinson. It is episode seven of season one. It is series one. Sorry, British television. It is fucking hilarious. I love... Have y'all ever seen Mr. Bean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Rowan Atkinson doesn't really talk in Mr. Bean, right? He's a lot different yeah. like the Black Adder than he that Christmas makes, special. Like, grunts he grunts. He grunts. Yeah. <laughs> but it is so brilliant because he's such a piece of shit human being. And he doesn't, you, he doesn't have any friends. And I don't even know why this girl's dating him. And it's just this miserable, lonely celebration of Christmas. But it's so wonderful. It's it's hilarious. My kids love it. My parents. It's one that I watch with my kids. My parents. Wow. It's a tradition that we've had since it aired on HBO. Actually, well, it came out on HBO here in America. Right. So that's how we watched it, and it's awesome. Rowan Atkinson kills it. He plays this horrible character that, for some reason, like he doesn't have any friends, so he melts like Christmas cards to himself and mm. drops them off under the door, and he acts surprised. He's like, oh, it's for like, me. Yeah. And he hangs them up, and his best friend's a teddy bear. And, yeah, oh, it's brilliant. So that that's is it. brilliant. That's awesome. You don't well, agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> so are you mailing yourself Christmas cards and going, oh, I just, go. I love the existence of people like that. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. And uh, what are we wrapping this up wrapping with? Wrapping up. So. get a giant turkey put on his head, which is where that Friends episode came from. Mm, which ahead. is not the one I'm going to talk about. Festivus? Right. Because, no. You were talking about Friends? <laughs> That's my last episode. How is nobody going to bring up the Star Wars holiday special? Because it's I didn't. Us. Because I already picked one he awful picked one. He picked one terrible one, apparently. Okay, oh Bubba my. Fett, guys. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, I will only watch that if I get drunk. There we go. Okay, well, let's go that can drunk. happen. Okay. All right, so my last pick is actually another sitcom, and it is Friends. Um, for me, obviously, uh, sitcom stuff like that resonates with me that's why I always pick those as my favorite things and this came out in 2000 it was season 7 which a lot of people may say might not be one of the better seasons of Friends but this is one of their better holiday episodes um, of course I thought you know you would ask me about the one with all the Thanksgivings and that's where they talk we have a Monica with a turkey on her head but that's more about the Thanksgivings and we're talking about Christmas because that's the season we're in right now I'm sorry and so the one with the holiday armadillo <laughs> is what? one of my favorites. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has seen it. I know it. Dan was forced to watch the entire 10 seasons. <laughs> oh, did you really? Not I'm for sure fun. I saw it you one probably time did. Through. So basically the premise is um, Ross, who normally is kind of a bad parent. You never really see him with his son, Ben, but he shows up every once in a while when it's needed for the story. Yeah. And it was needed for the story. Um, he has Ben for Christmas, and he decides he wants to teach his son Ben about their Jewish traditions, because on his side of the family, the Gellers are Jewish, right? And his mom is not Jewish. And so he wants to teach him about that. So he tries to teach him about it, and Ben is disappointed he's not going to get his traditional Christmas. And so Ross's main storyline is he's trying to make it up to his son. So he's trying to go find a Santa suit to wear, but he can't because it's last minute, and there's no Santa suits. They're all rented out. I mean, this is before Amazon Prime. This is before Amazon Prime. This is 2000. So he goes and he rents a massive armadillo suit to wear. Mm -hmm. He says that he is Santa's friend who represents the southern states, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, and he uses him to kind of get the Christmas spirit. But at the same time, Chandler, who feels bad for Ben, decides to, he finds a Santa suit and he shows up as Santa Claus, which turns Monica on. They're engaged at this point. And it's phenomenal. She's like, wait, wait, don't return it yet. Save it for later. So she's enjoying this aspect of it. Okay. Then Joey decides he also needs to make good, even though I don't know why. And he shows up in a Superman costume. <laughs> so you have the three of them trying to explain the Jews and the Jewish <laughs> tradition to this poor kid and okay. I think one of the best parts is one there's a lot of great lines like Chandler says something along the lines of I didn't know that Superman flew all the Jews out of Egypt um, <laughs> and then they all are lighting the menorah getting ready to light the menorah and Phoebe and Rachel walk in and Rachel's like did we just walk into the Easter Bunny's funeral <laughs> and because they're all dressed up yeah. and it's just hilarious and I think right at the end Phoebe makes one of her Phoebe-esque jokes and she's like 
I understand why Superman's here and why Santa's here, but why is a porcupine here talking about the holiday armadillo? So it's a wonderful um, episode because it's not just about Christmas. It reminds us about the Hanukkah and another um, holiday tradition that also comes around this time of year. So that episode does not help me understand what Hanukkah is, though. No, it does not okay. at all. I don't think it under... <laughs> well, it actually has some... It, they try to explain the Maccabees and everything like that to Ben, and that is, you know, in there. And there's some other side storylines about Rachel and Phoebe um, and their house, their apartment getting rebuilt after it burned down. But the main story is just about Ross trying to be a good dad, trying to you know, expand his son's traditions in the holidays, which I think is very important. You know, that's really what the He-Man and She-Ra of Christmas This special probably is so what it's about. Marlena was trying to explain at Christmas to everybody. <laughs> so she orchestrated this whole thing. <laughs> so those are some of our favorite holiday episodes, but we want to know what your favorite holiday episodes are. So leave those in the comments below. Don't forget to hit our like and subscribe buttons and follow us on all our social media channels. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. So, but you don't have a real tree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't make those mistakes. That's not, I'm not one of those That's not people. compatible with the two month Christmas season. <laughs> two <laughs> months. <laughs> two months. I can't handle it. I just can't. My tree is also all already up, so. What is with you people? You people. <laughs> 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 you people. 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 You people